Judge's Corner is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com and GatheringMagic.com. Support our show by visiting both websites. Now it's time for Judge's Corner with David Green. Hi, and welcome to Judge's Corner. Last week, we talked about the mechanics of Gate Crash, and we put off Planeswalkers. So this week, we're going to take a look at what Planeswalkers are, how they work, and how they can work for you. So for starters, what is a Planeswalker? A Planeswalker, according to the lore of Magic, is you or I when we play a game of Magic against each other. We're both Planeswalkers battling it out. But a Planeswalker permanent type, which was first spoiled in Future Sight and then eventually shown in Lorwyn, is basically a bunch of free spells on a stick that you can use once per turn again and again for just a one-time payment investment. So let's take a look at exactly what a Planeswalker is in our first example. Here we have Jace, Architect of Thought. Let's take a look at the card from the very top to bottom and review exactly how it works and what each of the things written on it mean. We have its name and its mana cost, and then the art. Planeswalker art is unique in that it always goes beyond the borders of the frame of the card. And then we have the Planeswalker type, and then its subtype. The type Planeswalker is just like any other permanent type, such as land, enchantment, artifact, or creature. And then the subtype is unique to that Planeswalker in a very special way that's very similar to the unique rule of legendary creatures having the same name. The Planeswalker Uniqueness rule looks at this subtype in order to determine whether or not a Planeswalker needs to be put into the graveyard by state-based action. If there are multiple copies of Jace or other types of Jaces from Magic's history on the battlefield, each of them will be put into the graveyard as a state-based action as long as they all share the same subtype. Planeswalker subtype is always one word and it describes the Planeswalker in a one-word way. Then, if we look a little lower, we'll see a couple of numbers off to the left and right of the card. The number off to the right is its loyalty, which is the number of loyalty counters this permanent enters the battlefield with. These counters are used kind of like a creature's life total for the Planeswalker. If they ever reach zero, the Planeswalker is put into the graveyard. The number of counters can be added to or removed from by other effects outside of the Planeswalker, or by paying for the costs to activate the abilities of the Planeswalker. You can never remove more counters than that are on the Planeswalker, but you can always add more and more counters to it. Each time you pay its cost, you add a counter or remove the certain number of counters it specifies, and then you get the effect onto the stack. You wait for it to resolve, and then you'll get whatever ability that Planeswalker has granted you. So this basically summarizes Planeswalkers. So before we move forward, I want to talk about Planeswalker loyalty abilities. Specifically, not every Planeswalker has three abilities. Some have four. Some have two faces. Some will have zero, in which you won't add or subtract any. All Planeswalker loyalty abilities can only be activated once per turn during your main phase as a sorcery. So, let's take a look at two cards that affect Planeswalker's loyalty totals. Here we have Vampire Hexmage. This card is great because it shows us that Planeswalkers can have counters removed from them, just like any other type of counter or any other permanent. Vampire Hexmage can effectively destroy any Planeswalker on the battlefield. Then we have Doubling Season. Doubling Season can be very, very good for Planeswalkers, or very confusing for new players. Doubling Season will double the amount of counters a Planeswalker enters the battlefield with, but it won't double the amount of counters we take off or put on a Planeswalker. Why is that? Well, that's because Doubling Season doubles the amount of counters a permanent comes into the battlefield with, but doesn't affect the amount of counters taken off or put onto a permanent as a result of a cost and a Planeswalker adding or subtracting counters from it through its ability is paying a cost. So Vampire Hexmage was great because it showed us that we can get rid of Planeswalkers through effects other than using other Planeswalkers or reducing its loyalty by just using its effects again and again. So let's take a look at a few of those examples now. So first we have Searing Spear trying to deal damage to our Planeswalker. Unfortunately, we can't target the Planeswalker because it isn't a creature or a player, but we can still deal damage to the Planeswalker. This is because any damage we would deal to a player, upon resolution, we can redirect to the Planeswalker. However, there is a tournament shortcut that allows us to deal damage directly to that Planeswalker, and that is simply if you say I'm going to Searing Sphere your Planeswalker, what that means is I'm targeting you with the Searing Sphere, and then when it resolves, I plan to redirect it to your Planeswalker. Another thing to be mindful of is that you cannot redirect loss of life. For example, I cannot redirect the one life you would lose through my Extort trigger to your Planeswalker. I also cannot redirect the damage that I would deal to myself through my own effects to my own Planeswalkers. I can only redirect them to my opponent's Planeswalkers. And I cannot redirect the damage that you would be dealing to me to my own Planeswalkers. Only the person dealing the damage gets to decide that. So what are some other ways you can lose loyalty counters? 
Well, how about attacking? So in this example, I have three creatures and my opponent has no one to block me with, but they do have a Domri raid on the battlefield. Here, I can decide to attack with all three creatures at my opponent, all three creatures at the Planeswalker, or I can divide the creatures as I see fit between the Planeswalker and the player. So besides damaging Planeswalkers or playing another copy of them to get rid of them, there are other ways we can get rid of Planeswalkers. For example, we can target them with a spell like Dread Boar that specifically destroys Planeswalkers, or we can try to get rid of a non-land permanent through an effect like Faroska's ability and choose a Planeswalker. We can also stop them dead in their tracks with effects like Pithing Needle, which completely stop them from activating any of their abilities. Finally, let's take a look at some common misconceptions with priority and Planeswalkers. So in this example, I play Liliana of the Veil, and you're holding a Searing Spear in hand, hoping to deal three damage to it before I even activate its ability. Unfortunately for you, you may even jump the gun and show me the Searing Spear, expecting to deal three damage to it before I have a chance to respond. Unfortunately though, because I'm the active player, I have priority when she resolves. What that means is, before you can even play your spear, I have an opportunity to play other spells or abilities, including Liliana's ability. So, if I decide to play Liliana's plus one ability, a counter will be put on her before you have a chance to even play your spear. And then her effect will be put on the stack. At that point, you have an opportunity to try to deal her three damage, but by then, she already has a counter put on her as a cost for her effect, and she'll survive the three damage you're hoping to deal her. So that last example really shows us that your Planeswalkers are vulnerable if you decide not to use their abilities right away. If you put any other effect on the stack, or if there's an effect waiting to resolve on the stack because of them coming into play, uh, your opponent has an opportunity to try to damage them to get rid of them, or play any effect to destroy them at instant speed to get rid of them. Because their effects can only be activated during the main phase, when you have priority, and when the stack is empty. Also, one other thing worth pointing out is that mana abilities created off of Planeswalkers aren't actually real mana abilities. A Planeswalker that produces mana through its loyalty abilities is not a mana ability and therefore uses the stack, unlike Birds of Paradise or tapping a land for mana. So that basically concludes our episode. We're still working on the Q&A segment. We don't really have everything together enough to present it to you yet. We don't know what next week's episode is going to be, so surprise. And until next week, stay loyal, use your ultimates wisely, and have fun.